Hello and welcome to IMVIS 2024 Behind the Build. My name's Archana Ganesh Lingam and I'm co-host of IMVIS. For those of you new here, IMVIS is the world's largest data visualization competition. Each year, hundreds of people in the data fam enter a feeder contest for the chance to be chosen as an IMVIS finalist to build a viz in 20 minutes or so in front of thousands at Tableau Conference. This year's championship theme was all about movies, so let's get rolling. During Behind the Build, our finalists will sit down with their Sue Visa to watch back a playback of their build to talk through the strategies, techniques, and behind the scenes prep that got them ready for the final showdown. Today, I'm joined by finalist Chris Westlake from Edinburgh, Scotland, who created a viz on exploring the top episodes of his favorite TV show, The Office. He's joined by JP King to talk through his build so over to you both. Thank you very much, Archana. And hello, Chris. Congratulations for winning IronViz. How, how have you been since, since winning? Hey, JP. I'm good, thanks. Um, yeah, it's been a, quite a crazy few few weeks, couple of months. Um, how are you? It's great to yeah. have a conversation with you again. Yeah, good, thank you. It's, it's odd to see the build all over again and be straight back into it. Um, it yeah, let, let's go through it. Yeah, let's have a look at what you've, what you've been up to then. Uh, hopefully it gives you a good chance to actually talk through the biz in a little bit more detail. Um, how was your first reaction to working with this data though? What were your first thoughts? It was a bit overwhelming. So obviously, as I said in the final, I grew up without a TV. So I don't really know that much about TV shows, what's popular, what's kind of cool to talk about. And I felt a little bit in the dark with it. But the more I used it, the more I kind of got into it. And by the end of it, it's such a cool data set and I'm really looking forward to seeing what other people do with it as well. Mm. Yeah, agreed. It looks like I think because I mean what we've got on screen here is your use of parameters and the pulse maneuver. So it looks like you basically got all of the data pretty well prepared prior to the, the final. What kind of stuff did you do in order to get it to this stage? Yeah, so a lot of the calculations that I used, I pushed back into the prep stage um, as much as I could, really. Obviously, the number of parameters meant that there were a large number of fields that you can't handle in Tableau prep. I think it was 29 or 30 fields, which is definitely higher than I would have liked it to be. It's kind of a lot of repetitive strain going on here. Um, I think also things around kind of naming um, will see later how the fields are named with each sheet in mind. And even these calculated fields, they've all got a number next to them. So you probably heard me on stage as I was dragging these in going one, two, three, four. As really? each of them move across. Wow. OK. And then as soon as you have it all ready, I guess it means that you can use that search function. So you've just got S1, which I assume sheet one. Yeah, completely. Nice. OK. And then was there ever a stage where you didn't do these calculations? Because obviously you're trying to build this in such a short amount of time. Was there a moment where you had to cut down some stuff to get to this point? Yeah, definitely. Um, I had loads of kind of other ideas for what to build in to the viz, which had to, to come out. So things like the scatter plot that we're building at the moment, um, it did have a zoom functionality. So using a whole load more parameters so that you could select an area on the chart and zoom into it that was just a bit too extreme and i think taking mm -hmm. that out saved me about five minutes on the build i feel like you could maybe publish a advanced version after iron viz of here's what i could do if i had an hour and a half to build it <laughs> would that be would good. be very interesting that'd be good yeah i think i remember when this was up on stage um there was lots of reactions to those nice bubbles that you created using the uh basically a drop shadow right um was that the initial yeah. iteration of it? Um, I always had the kind of border on the circle. Um, the idea of using a shape came in later again, just to save time on this. Um, it's a lot quicker to just add one shape rather than a dual axis and synchronizing that axis and so on. This but, yeah. visualization uh, was interesting. This Do one, you, it really uh, got messy here. <laughs> This is, yes, I think the rest of the Viz build is pretty clean and concise, but this one gets a bit hectic. And I wonder, in in hindsight or in the moment, do you think there are any other ways that you could have visualized this one as opposed to almost like a gappy bar chart? 
I honestly haven't given it that much thought. I feel like a dot plot might have worked or a kind of line chart. I almost prefer bar charts to line charts because when you end up with like a gap in the middle of the time series, you don't have kind of it just skipping over that point if it's yeah. bars. Um, yeah, that's a good point. So basically this, in order to view gaps in the data, yeah. hence Absolutely. by the bars. Yeah, that makes sense. Did that also play into how you then build the other sheets though? Because you obviously go from bar to bar. So does that play a, a role? Yeah, it definitely helps to kind of keep the same chart types. Um, although actually what I go from after those bars is building the navigation button. So oh, true. that changes from a bar to shape. I hadn't actually realized that. Yeah, that's like true, actually, so, that does so much. Yeah, that's really interesting. And then this particular bit is, is interesting because this is where you start branching out into the awards data, which I'm not sure whether anyone else on the stage did, if I remember correctly. I don't think so. It was quite a last minute kind of addition that I, I wasn't going to. And then I kind of needed that last step of the story to be added in. Um, which is where it came from. And it worked really nicely yeah. for that. This is your centerpiece. This is the the centerpiece of the, the dashboard, in my opinion. Um, can you talk us through your radial chart now that you're not rushed on stage? It still looks fairly rushed. I can't believe that my hand <laughs> was moving this fast. Um, so this is kind of made up of lots of different layers with lots of make point calculations enabling you to use Tableau's kind of plotting function, and then tie that into map layers. So what you have is a layer for the backdrop that just kind of sets sets the scene, sets a base for it all. And then added onto that, you have reference lines, and then the season average lines, the series average line, which is the dotted one that's just coming in there. And then the dots start to be added as well. I think something really cool that I did in here, which I was quite pleased with, was you'll notice in just a minute um, when the tooltip comes up, the whole tooltip for this is just one field, which took out the need for kind of editing the format of number fields, anything like that. It was all handled in prep beforehand. Nice. Is that a trick that you'd seen on other IronViz stages? It's not. This was probably the only trick that I <laughs> came up with myself. <laughs> this could be an. This is the an original. This is an original Westlake maneuver. Very I think clever. It might. Yeah, I think it might. I think it might be. Um, but yeah, you can tell because I think your use of text is really interesting. And like even in the feeder competition, running up to this, you use quite a lot of text, right? And I think you use it quite carefully, but there is quite a lot of it for sure. Yeah, completely. I can remember that being kind of mentioned while we were on stage, um, that there was so much text. And in, in a way, it's kind of not there for everybody to read it kind of every time they look at it. It's more just, it's there for that context if you want it, because I'm obviously not always there when somebody looks at this to explain it to them and talk them through it. Yeah, agreed. And I think the text, particularly around, you know, the real red bubbles there, I think, is it worth talking through What's the logic behind why something's colored red here? Yeah, definitely. So this is probably something that I'd think about changing if I were to do it again. So the red bubbles come in when the series average is higher or lower than any of the individual season averages. So take the office as an example. Um, what you have is that overall kind of feeling that people have of the show is better than the individual seasons because of these standout episodes, which are highlighted in red, which I kind of really wanted to call out as outliers in a slightly unconventional sense of outliers. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's definitely really impactful, particularly because it's the only red that's on the dashboard, right? So I think it's really effective at grabbing attention for sure. Um, I, I guess as you go into like the dashboard build phase, this is when it, it starts to look like magic, right? Because things like disappear, dynamic zones basically are the whole part of this dashboard. But 
were you always thinking of doing it on a single canvas? Did you have any iterations where you thought maybe I'll try a long form thing or stories? What was the thought so, process? So for me, it was always going to be one one screen because of the format of the Iron Biz final. It was going to be put up on a big screen and I was going to talk through it as if it was a presentation. So I almost wanted to create like a glorified slide deck that I could kind of guide people through. Yeah, Adding that's, in that's interesting. That kind of come and go was quite stressful. It's kind of <laughs> never quite sure if some of these hidden bits are actually going to pop up when you need them. Until you click. Yeah, 100 percent And I guess it also means it, some of the animations are really impactful as well, right? Because they, they show and hide and they disappear. Do you do you find yourselves using dynamic zones in your in your day job in a business context? I do, yeah. So we used to have um kind of dashboards with eight, nine, ten tabs even. Um and we've worked out that we can really simplify that by pulling it into one one dashboard with kind of drop down parameters that enable you to switch between those tabs, but still stay on the same page. So it really reduces the load time on Tableau server. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I guess one final thing on this actually is the really cool legend in the bottom. You have a custom radial chart legend. It looks really cool. How, how do you make that? Yeah, so that was done in Figma, um, which is... Nice. Yeah, so it's just an image pulled in with lots of alt text so that people with accessibility issues can still kind of access the data that's the text that's behind that. Yeah, it's definitely a little little thing there that goes above and beyond like a traditional Tableau legend, right? Like a little picture legend in the bottom there. Yeah, um, yeah, completely. Kind of dissecting that, that radial and bringing in the component one by one, building it up for you. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot a lot to digest. Um, but it looks like we're wrapping up now because you're just about to turn on animations, right? Um, yeah, is there anything right. you would change or add to this visualization if you had a bit more time with the data? I, other than the zooming in on the scatter plot, I really don't think so. <laughs> I feel like it ticked okay. all the boxes that I wanted to tick. Um, and yeah, obviously worked in a bigger picture. Right, very well. It did. Yeah, it was amazing. It was an absolutely amazing build. Um, awesome. Right. So uh, I, I guess just to wrap up, thank you very much for, for walking through your build. Um, hopefully it gave people a lot more of a view into the details in how it was built. Um, and all that leaves us to say is, uh, what what are you what have you got going on? Let the people know what what is Chris Westlake doing at the moment. So I released a website and kind of blog um, a couple of weeks ago, um, where I'll be sharing kind of more insights on my IMVIS build and other visualizations that I do, and probably some tutorials going on into the future. So do be sure to check that out. It's WestlakeAnalytics.com. So. That's Great. the main thing, really, for me. Great. Congratulations, Chris. And uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. Um, and hopefully everyone's enjoyed this, this build session. And hopefully we'll see you guys all at the next public conference. Cheers. Thanks, Jeffrey.